Thank you for inviting me as president of Gallaudet University to give the opening remarks at your education summit. We here at Gallaudet are thrilled to participate. We would like to welcome the parents, education community, deaf community, and children. We're excited to see people getting together to examine ways to improve the quality of education for all of our deaf, hard of hearing students statewide there in Nebraska. There are two parts to this presentation. First, we'll be talking about language and research and what we know in that area. And secondly, we'll be talking about IEPs and some thoughts and advice for you on that topic. First, I'd like to discuss some exciting research that's done related to language and how it impacts brain development, learning, and academic achievement. One of the most damaging misconceptions and myths that's been around for years is that it's completely acceptable and important to teach a child, especially a deaf child, spoken language first and expose them to sign language later. That that process of language learning is acceptable. The fact is, based on hundreds of studies that have been done over the last 50 years by people like Dr. Petito and other researchers, they've proven that this is not at all true. So what do we know? Studies show that young deaf children, when exposed to sign language, achieve the same language milestones at the same pace, at the same time, when compared to hearing children learning a spoken language. So by that, we know that the window for language acquisition, be it a spoken language or a sign language, occurs at the same time in the same place in the brain. And therefore, we now know that speech and sign language are biologically equivalent, especially as it pertains to the way they develop in the brain. Our brains are able and will process both a visual language and a spoken language like English in the exact same place, in the exact same way. The brain does not discriminate against language, it's people that do. People have a preference for one language over the other because of their own personal language experiences. It's important to understand the visual language provides every child, not just a deaf child, visual processing advantages. Advantages such as eye tracking, greater peripheral vision. These areas are enhanced with visual language exposure. We also know that as it relates to learning, when a child is exposed to a visual language, that experience with a visual language and eye tracking that comes with it, these are the kinds of things that actually enhance and support tissue development in the brain and the systems of development in the brain that actually support and foster the learning of other languages like English. Research has proven time and time again that early exposure to a visual language like American Sign Language actually supports English acquisition, including speech, improvement of vocabulary, reading skills, if we compare deaf children to hearing children who only learn English. So what that means is that the brain's capacity to bridge learning from a visual language to a spoken language in its written form, in printed form, is actually critical to learning, development, and academic achievement for deaf and hearing children. We also know that children who are bilingual in other languages, to spoken languages like Spanish and English, they have similar experiences to deaf babies who learn ASL and English. Their social skills, their interpersonal skills, and their language assessment and analysis. Reading skills and language skills are much more enhanced when compared to those who are monolinguals or know only one language. One of the most important myths that we recognize these days is that parents don't know sign language, and so as a result, the child's not going to be able to pick up language nor benefit from a visual language. We know that's not true. Research, has, in fact, has proven that as parents are acquiring a visual language bit by bit and they're exposing their baby at the same time as they are learning a visual language, that child's brain still is benefiting from the exposure to patterns and will develop in the same way 
as parents who are fluent in sign language communicating with their deaf babies. So remember, first, I love to say this as president of Gallaudet, First, we must love our children because it's love that is the best predictor of a child's success. Secondly, we as parents and community members, teachers, professionals, and medical professionals do not have to choose between languages one over the other. We don't have to exclude one language over another, but instead we can include both. So let's move forward by providing our deaf children, hard hearing children, deaf blind children, and hearing children to both American Sign Language and English to provide them with both of those language experiences. Now moving on to talk about IEPs. The purpose of IEPs and how it relates to the language experience, learning experience, and brain development as well as academic achievement for deaf children. IEPs are individual education plans. It's a tool. It's actually a tool to support the success of the child. The child is not given a prescription that would actually be beneficial for every child. As a tool, it's not that it requires one language over another language. So you might wonder, what's the purpose of an IEP? First, it's a legal document. A legal document that outlines the plan for that child's education. It's a tool that will document and define expectations and goals for services to be provided, teaching and support that's necessary for every child, including language learning, speech training, and hearing support for deaf children. The purpose is to specify and clearly outline those goals for your child. What's important is that this is a place where we have an opportunity to really define language, language modalities that need to be learned by your child. This is a place where you can define your child's learning needs and establish certain marked goals that need to be met along the way for language development to be achieved. And it's also a tool to help you decide where your child should be placed and in which learning environment that child will thrive, which skill and language environment will actually meet the goals that have been spelled out. It's important to remember that the IEP process involves parents and they have the process and the authority to decide what's best for their child. Parents have the right to accept or reject the IEP that's proposed by the school. It's important that the parents be very much included in the development of the IEP and that they work with the IEP team in this process. The IEP is structured under the law in a way and such that it can facilitate conversations so that you can learn together, develop a plan together that will ensure every child has education rights that are honored and that parents have tools to advocate for what their child needs to learn and to thrive. Language and access to language is essential for all children's success, especially for our deaf, hard of hearing, and deafblind children. There are two parts to that plan as it relates to learning and language. This can help you with advocating for the right language supports, including that a need to be included in your child's education system. I want to encourage you to think about the relationship between language and thriving learners. You know, we all know that language is key to education, ensuring that immediate and not delayed access to language is so very important to every child in order for them to thrive in the future as students, as innovators, as leaders, as employees, as parents, and as citizens. We can choose that future for our child instead of one of a life of poverty and dependence. Let's work together to learn how we can be more effective in advocating for our children, including new research and developments to better understand the ways to use both American Sign Language and English, both a spoken language and a sign language in our child's learning experience in all of our schools and programs. We don't have to exclude, but rather can include both. That, along with a lot of love, 
will take all of us a lot further. We here at Gallaudet University wish you all the most success in your educational summit. We are committed here to be a resource to all of you. Thank you.